Tennessee and the upstate of South Carolina. Those the, the two most recent uh, victories for ETSU ahead of that setback at the hands of you. In C. Asheville. Today they go head to head with the Cavaliers, and with that, we are underway. First 45 coming your direction of what should be a fun night of soccer. Fans continuing to file in here. It's been uh, a bit overcast in central Virginia today, but uh, signs of fall in the air when you think about what temperatures have done in recent days, and a comfortable night to say the least for those out on the pitch and, and getting ready to, to handle business. You look beyond that most recent contest for Virginia the the three one set back at the hands of Notre Dame it was by that score that Virginia did ultimately win that NC State contest in conference competition and then prior to that mentioned the Cavaliers were on the road at JMU and that was after a Duke contest it was a, a two nothing loss so Virginia uh, the last time back to back wins for the Cavaliers were secured you're talking George Mason Maryland at the end of the month of August in the very first part of this month of September. So Virginia looking to try to start this again, rematch homestand off on the right foot. Here's a chance to do so. Negrov taking the corner. It is cleared on a header for ETSU to work it out of there. Virginia going to stay with it. And here's Paul Visa. Well, you, you talk about the fans filing in and look at the youngsters on the far side at the very top of your screen as they run with the student athletes and, and just really enjoying a, a night in which they can see the Cavaliers right here at home in the form of Citron, Visa O'Connor, talked about a Noor, Tim Gashi Mangrove, Norris Singer, Taylor, those the the group in the starting lineup for Coach Gilnovach tonight who picked up that 100th ACC victory in that contest we referenced back on the 16th, that win for Virginia, 100 ACC wins under his belt now. Bittencourt down, Bittencourt a little bit shaken up on this contact on the ETSU side of things, if we can get a sense of exactly what took place as, wow, just uh, took it right in the noggin as they were trying to both win the ball on the header. And this may take a moment for Bittencourt, really tough and the training staff out to get a look as he collided with Tiam, and you know what force Tiam brings to the table for UVA. Going to take just a moment for Bentoncourt to, to work his way over to that ETSU bench. Gives us a chance to tell you the ETSU lineup as it, it looks like he is not showing any real serious Henry signs, which is great. Right number six, David Kavotich. Coming into the contest. Number 20, Gabriel Bettencourt. Is David Kovacic to take over? As he works his way in the thick of things, as promised. Gunther, Raventlo, Ramos, Panholzer, Richards. Among the starters, as we got a throw in coming for ETSU here. This is going to be handled by Gunther, it would seem. The remainder of the lineup Benton Court Cross, Carroll, McKenna, and Chiriap, all in support of Cole Hunter. And getting the nod for Virginia tonight in goal. Share time uh, along the way with Holden Brown on the year. But being called upon on this occasion, maybe tested a bit here. As you see the pressure being provided by ETSU, that's going to be headed out by Visa when all is said and done. And ETSU is going to have a first chance really to set something up here as Richards and company all smiles with the way things have transpired, at least from an opportunity standpoint. So here is just as we began to talk about it a little bit. The first real test for Petruni and goal. And it's going to bounce off and come near side. Eventually be controlled by Virginia. There was a door. Lost out and will belong to the Cavaliers.
Talking about the Virginia keeper, a junior Coastal Carolina transfer who hails from San Antonio, Texas. Getting the nod tonight on this hit again, Hunter Cole. Cole Hunter, I should say, who handles those responsibilities on the ETSU side of things. There's those are two expected to stay the offense tonight in between the pipes. Think about this. We find ourselves over four minutes into the contest now. And though both teams have secured a corner, neither team has been able to officially notch a shot. We'll see how long it takes until that changes. Mentioned it off the top, first ever meeting between ETSU and Virginia. Not the first ACC competition that the Bucks have seen. They faced North Carolina back on the opening day of the month. Here's Virginia looking to do something against their foes in the Silicon. And there's a shot taken, a left-footed effort from out top by Gashi. But it sells high of the crossbar, and the first real look for Virginia is just a bit above the target. Well, here's the feed from Norris, and there's the left-footed look that number 12 wanted. But again, the effort for Gashi just a bit high as it sails above. Virginia's the first to notch that shot and comes just over five minutes into our contest. Right near that area. The oh, East Tennessee State. Newly entered. Kovacic, who we told you came in just a moment ago after players shaken up in the early moments had to depart Benton Court. But they won't be able to get it to him at the top of the box in Virginia. Content to pass it around amongst the back line at the moment. Kayla, among others, was working with it before ultimately Gunther and now Gashi on the Virginia side. Here are the Cavaliers again. For an entry pass, got a couple of Cavaliers down there near the top of the six, but no real passing lane to work it to them, and it is cleared by ETSU. You're wondering about it, that battle between ETSU and North Carolina, a 2-1 final in favor of the Tar Heels. And for Virginia, it is the second time this season that the Cavaliers are seeing a program they've never played before. The other Iona in that one nothing. August 24th contest, as many of you might remember. So, two teams with no familiarity whatsoever with one another as the Southern Conference collides with the ACC on this night. Gathered up by Norris. Norris, a little fancy footwork to create his own space. But ETSU was waiting and is able to turn it aside. ETSU and those lighter uniforms for those of you just finding us. Everything trimmed up and gold with navy on that white as well. And for Virginia, wearing the darker uniforms, everything trimmed up in orange and white for the Hoods. Just one shot, it belongs to Virginia. A corner apiece for these two, and it's the Cavaliers camping out near the attacking third right now. Quick move, left-footed shot again, and this just going to care him off the keeper for Daniel Mangroff, who thought perhaps he'd put Virginia on the board. 
Rob Sheffield, the second shot for UVA resulting in uh, another Cole Hunter save. And here's how it looked. It's Hunter made contact with it on the ground. Just saw it kind of squirt up above the goal. And the Cavaliers will have a corner. Second corner for Virginia. Another header. The serve was a clear. He's played along and into the box and deciding to come out and attack it himself. Cole Hunter will bring this down. Hunter, 360 minutes in goal coming in. That was an even split. With Quadio, the other of the goalkeepers. Quadio and Hunter both sharing time, and both of them, interestingly enough, 14 saves apiece coming into tonight. We'll make it 16 for... Hunter at the moment with a couple in real time already having been notched. Both of them four games played and playing the full of each of those four contests for an ATSU squad that, as we mentioned off the top, entered three, four, and one on the year. Saves percentage, 778 to this point for Hunter. And both of the keepers for ETSU averaging right at a, a goal allowed apiece. One flat for Hunter, one just over one. In the case of Quadio, the other of the keepers. Bucks set up nicely here. What will Ramos opt to do? Top the stat sheet, a couple of goals, a couple of assists. He and McKenna, the two with a pair of goals each, and waiting on this to come down out of the sky. Joy Petroni. And he will top everything for the moment. And the set piece for ETSU. He is turned away. ETSU, as the name indicates, out of the eastern part of the state of Tennessee from the Tri-Cities area. Where it meets Virginia, the Bristol, Kingsport, and of course, Johnson City officially where ETSU is located for those of you perhaps not familiar with the Buccaneers. Folks, as we mentioned, out of the Southern Conference, highly respected uh, Virginia, Southern League, you know, their work over the years, the likes of UNCG, Furman and Mercer, and the list goes on and on. We'll talk a little bit about the league and the expectations in the league before the night is done, but it's an ETSU squad out of conference and taking on Virginia for the very first time on this night. So far, so good for the visiting Bucks as they have held serve with UVA, at least uh, stayed even with them. One shot on the board for the Bucks, two for Virginia. The big time set piece that ETSU had a moment ago, Virginia with a couple of corners to the Bucks one. So you look at the numbers and aside from the sheer time frame that Virginia was just outside the box, in that sequence around five or six minutes ago game time. The numbers show a, a fairly even contest thus far. Which is what you want, playing on the road, playing in an environment such as Klockner provides. There's turnout tonight. See on the far side, fans making use of the berm, certainly those. who have found a spot in the bleachers will be heard from as Virginia puts things together tonight. For the whistle, 
Norris going to toss this right into the feet of Jack Singer. Top of the box, but right as that was happening for Anor, the flag is raised on the far side. The offside call, turning it over to ETSU. Haven't talked about our officials tonight. J.C. Griggs is our referee. Daniel Kapler handling the one sideline. Andrew Vincelomo, the other. John Lesniak, the alternate official if needed. Here's a shot through a small window. Another left look. And another chance that is capitalized on by Cole Hunter, who smothers it up to no avail. Take a look at this. Fed out there by Tia, and you know who's going to take the shot. And Orr works himself to a little bit of an open spot to try that left foot but it'll simply run the shot total up for Virginia and keep things where they've been on the scoreboard with the latest moment going to Cole Hunter. Fifteen behind us. Between these two in a first ever meeting, and this is crossed in, but before it can reach Anor, a header from Chris McKenna, well timed. How about the work on that back line from Chris McKenna? Gladly accept the opportunity here. Looking for the best view of the pitch. Those younger fans, the teams in attendance tonight, scurry right down there on the rail. What a view for this corner. What an opportunity to see some of the best at their craft on a night like this. Beyond the touch line, so it's going to be thrown in at the feet of Singer. TM. He tries to find some space. He's kind of lost that up to the other side of the six. Nothing but white jerseys there. So no real scoring chance for Virginia will materialize. TM, of course, the transfer from Oregon State. Played in the coaching tree of Skelnovach. We talked about it. Uh, as those of you who follow the sport closely are aware, picked up his 100th ACC win this month. Another near Anor, but uh, again, Cole Hunter having his decision to come charging out and gather it up, pay off. Virginia. TM, a guy that Coach Gelnovach and his staff talk about as a candidate for a number of different roles. And you wonder just how those roles will be established for a Virginia team with mixed returns, at least according to, to their own internal expectations so far. Squad that returns 70 to 90 percent of the scoring. Very talented on the front line, as you're well aware. And if you weren't, Nor has certainly shown you that in recent contests. Everybody's still kind of piecing their spot on this team together for UVA. Uh, many of them, I should say, are, are doing just that. Nico Cross pops up, and right there. With our referee is Tiam, as you're going to get another look at the collision which brought play to a halt. Tiam going right underneath Nico Cross, who went to the deck. The foul will allow for a free kick from the ETSU side. Just as it looked like that may be trouble, Jack Singer oh, clears it out of there for UVA. 
And now a Virginia player down. It looks like Mangaroff. Slow to get up as the contest has become suddenly very physical between these two at the 26-45 and ticking downward mark in this first half. Three shots for Virginia to one for ETSU. Three corners for the Hoos. Single opportunity from the corner for the Bucks as well. Saves already for Cole Hunter. One required of Patroni as well. Patroni, the coastal transfer, sharing time as we said it with the captain, Holden Brown, who missed time in the spring with hanging injury issues and has shared responsibilities with Patroni thus far to the tune of 90 minutes coming into this one. And a second contest played right before your very eyes. At least starting this one in goal for Virginia. Injury issue certainly. mind toward relying on the creation of further depth and again so many roles still being defined as you wade into the conference season in these days and among those called upon to Make their own contributions. The starting goalkeeper tonight for UVA. Okay, Buccaneers. And not here at home. And the first of three ETSU in town. Virginia returns to ACC play, welcoming in Louisville, and then it's Hofstra the final contest just over into the month of October on the third to be specific that will close out the three here before the Hoos travel to Boston College then welcome in Pitt then go to Virginia Tech and you really are in the thick of conference play at that point well another collision this time on the far side and this one going to require a moment Richards, Pela both being pointed to and both now being checked on by the training staffs. As everything comes to a halt with 24.04 to play. Cavaliers, as I mentioned, when you discuss ACC play, fresh off a setback to the 15th ranked team in the country. And that was even though Virginia, interestingly enough, in that contest had had 58% possession. Cavaliers put five shots on frame. And much like the early corners we've seen from Virginia tonight, took six of them against Notre Dame. But the outcome trending Irish when all was said and done to the tune of a 3-1 final. Played long to Anor. Weighs his options. 
Help was coming in the form of Tiam and others, but he decides to turn and regroup as Virginia now sees Aiden O'Connor on top of it as he dribbles forward in the middle of the field. Just beyond Mangorov and boy, what a tackle to come in. Take that away and give Virginia a chance to go back on the offensive here. In the end, Norris had possession for UVA. And here's Mangaroff again. Goal scores for Virginia on the year. Has a goal and an assist for three total points to his credit. You, you're wondering where the offense has come from for Virginia, aside from an Orr's four goals. A couple of them for Afonso, and then a trio of single goal, goal scores, uh, among whom Mangroff finds himself. Tim and Gashi, the others. Boy, just a little touch by Citron to lay that out there. Corner kick the for the Cavaliers. Let's hear it, dude. the Hoos that have tested Cole Hunter, but on each occasion, this has been the outcome. A matchup that has remained scoreless. Virginia trying to load up, see if they could perhaps test the in-state product, the Tennessee native, one more time. Cole Hunter, a couple of saves officially to this point. Dizzy on the four Virginia corners and the three total shots. As we dip inside 20 minutes remaining in the first half. Hunter, by the way, he was a transfer from Lander University in South Carolina. And now in his redshirt senior campaign was the SOCON goalkeeper of the year. Oh, Last season, I received the Commissioner's Medal named to the All-Academic Team as well as the All-Conference Team alongside those Goalkeeper of the Year honors. 35 saves and 11 total goals allowed. One of the things you notice about the symmetrical nature of his year, four different times a season ago that he posted four saves, which was his season high. He's halfway there already in the first half tonight. From Mount Juliet High School. Same location for so many athletes there in the state of Tennessee where it's goalkeeper of the year and two-time 
Division I state champ with Tennessee United. He's been tested tonight. Virginia trying to test him again here, but on cue, it ends up right in the grasp of Cole Hunter. And the exercise science major lets traffic die down before putting a strong right foot into it. Tennessee He's opposite Petruni tonight, as we mentioned. We talked about the San Antonio native being a Coastal Carolina transfer. Spent two seasons as the Chanticleers goalkeeper there in Conway, South Carolina. And you look back at his sophomore campaign a year ago, he made 14 starts. Played over 1,200 minutes between the posts. So while he may be new to UVA, the experience certainly there. 45 saves and a percentage of .672. As Gunther and his teammates load up to see if perhaps they can put a test on the Virginia keeper. Substitution for the guy entering is number 18. Two-time Sunbelt Belt weekly Kale honor recipient and goalkeeper. For East Tennessee, entering is number 13, Jason And had three clean sheets, including in for number 25, a contest Cameron against Cameron. Kentucky. The 2022 NCAA tournament comes to mind as well as third-ranked Marshall when you look at some of the premier moments for Petruni before he worked his way to Charlottesville. But good throughout his career. Had his career best eight saves against uh, number 24 High Point at the time. You know how well they play soccer at High Point. You don't have to go too far back for the meeting with Virginia when you talk about tournament impact. And against that, at the time, 24th ranked high point squad in his freshman year. Petruni for Coastal Carolina coming away with those eight saves to set his high water mark as a freshman. So the background on the two keepers in this one. Two, two standout keepers to say the least. And they have been as advertised so far tonight. Cole Hunter certainly that once more as Cole Hunter steps out and gets his paws on this. Ubogu look. Kome Ubogu. As we said a couple of times earlier, running Virginia's shot total a little higher, even if nothing is on the board for either side just yet. Talked about ETSU's most recent match being a 2-0 loss to UNC Asheville back on the 19th. non-conference battles. When you look at their standing in the conference from which they held, the Southern Conference, this is a Bucks team that, that leads the league through the non-conference portion of the schedule, of course, in shots per game, and second, in shots on goal per game in the entire Southern Conference, 1.13 and 2.25. the on goal and then total shots numbers for this ETSU squad. So this is a team used to applying the pressure. Ramos from San Pablo, Brazil. And McKenna from Glasgow, Scotland.
the Sao Paulo native at the top of the stat sheet, as we told you earlier, it had been quite the tandem for the CTSU squad. In a defense, defensive posture right now, as this is played all the way across and near Parker Sloan's location, but before he can get to it, it works beyond the goal line and will result in a goal kick for Cole Hunter. But you take Ramos and McKenna. Ramos, who is not only leading the Bucks, but is in the top five in the SOCON with his point total at six with the two goals and two assists on the season. And McKenna, who is sixth in the league with his five points, having scored a couple of goals and picking up an assist in matches against uh, Radford and Presbyterian that we we mentioned earlier that a recent contest for ETSU. They, they make quite the one-two punch for the Bucks. Transfer goal tonight for Virginia. You saw the Oregon State transfer team who has been such a headliner in the early part of the season. Talked a great deal about mixing in with the established veterans, Connor Citron, whose name we called a little bit earlier, Islander, the return of so many of those familiar names, Mangaroff, of course, Brown, the captain in goal. He has been able to go and been called upon by Virginia. Quite the mix for. Coach Gil Novach, a group he called as deep a team. And he's had here in Virginia, and that's saying something. As, uh, the underlying storyline we've discussed regularly in such contests uh, for roles being defined still certainly in the forefront of the mind of whose fans? Well, Zanor, just as he was beginning to load up, it is taken care of by Nico Cross, who punches it out far side. It'll be a throw in for Virginia. After Cross turned aside the head of steam that Anor was building. Ten minutes remaining in the opening half between Virginia and ETSU. Aiden O'Connor, speaking of O'Connor just a moment ago, in the mix there. Skashi also among those contributors on the score sheet for Virginia. is ETSU has it on the far side. Substitution for East Tennessee. Entering is number 27, Noah Franks, coming in for number nine, Tariq Ponholzer. Noah Franks coming on as a part of things for ETSU now. Virginia team, as uh, we were just talking about, still kind of tinkering with the roles, letting those be defined with the depth that exists up and down this ro roster for the storied head coach, George Gilnavatch, who just crossed over that ACC milestone. Parker Sloan. Flick that in there with a header. Designs on perhaps another from Ubogu, but before he could do so, 
Cole Hunter came charging once more and snatched it out of the sky. Coach Geldovac opposite tonight, David Lilly. One thing you can say about ETSU, good under David Lilly coming off losses in his tenure. Another look at Cole Hunter. As he was able to get to that just before Kome Obogu could do anything further with it. David Lilly, a familiar face to ETSU fans. Was an assistant at ETSU from 2010 to 2017 before he spent time as the head coach at Milligan. And then returned to the Tri-Cities area with the blue and gold. He, too... Uh, Scotland native, was a Milligan grad in 07. It's a more than one homecoming in his coaching journey at the helm of the Division I Bucks in the Southern Conference. Not a bad player in his own right. Lilly was uh, NAIA All-American in 2005 and 2006, and the Region 8 Player of the Year in 2006, as well as Conference Player of the Year in that 06 season and in 05. So, very successful playing career in the NAIA ranks, including a, a Sweet 16 appearance in the National Tournament. And 32 goals as a prolific scorer during his own time on the pitch and bringing all that experience to the Tri-Cities area for this ETSU squad. Virginia owning possession in these moments. But despite five shots to just the one for ETSU, still looking for the back of the net for the first time in a scoreless contest with 550. Now left to go in the opening half. ETSU closing up quickly and before Anor can turn. It'll belong to the Bucks. Slowed by Aiden O'Connor. Missed it when we talked about it right out of the gate. Anor, ACC Player of the Week honors offensively. For the hot streak he has shown of late. Now four goals and Team high eight points has also become one of four Cavaliers with double digit shots to his credit this year. The only player who's taken more looks is, as you might expect, Leo Afonso, who in six contests played took 16 looks at goal for Virginia. That to the 13. State. that have been tried along the way for a nor well here's virginia inside the four and a half minute mark and in a prime position to capitalize this paul visa looks over his teammates number four as we come up on just four minutes remaining in the opening half with one of the more consequential moments for Virginia perhaps plays that right at the top of the six both teams trying for a header in the end it's going to be cleared long by ETSU all the way out to Parker Sloan territory Back by Gashi. And then a strong right foot of Gunther. Going to play that uh, down near Petruni, who will let it rest on his right foot. Petruni 
back in the mix after Virginia had owned possession for a while. Chances have belonged to UVA. Five shots, four on goal, four corners. Those numbers all trending Virginia down the stretch in this first half. Comes near side to Sloan again. Back across. Little part of the screen, just a little touch. Sloan there to chase it down. Rick Cavaliers occupying the box, but no way to work it into that box. Blue pass tough to come by. The passing lanes closed up nicely by ETSU at times in this first half. Tiam, putting that out there toward the flag and Virginia with a little back and forth here inside two minutes to go in the opening period and Visa will lose this out beyond the goal line. Goal kick coming goal for ETSU. Kick, ETSU. working his way back up the field of the junior Germany. Cavaliers shots, the five of them coming from Ubogu a couple. One, one Nor one, Gashi one, one, Mangrove one. Owning the looks for Virginia, that quartet able to at least notch a shot. But the Ubogus were on goal. The Anor and Mangrove shots shared that distinction so that four of Virginia's five shots in the first half were on goal. Looks like the late effort may come from ETSU and a little header oh, tried to punch it just inside the post, but it will sail wide. And Petruni over to retrieve it. Take another look at this. Uh, header and a, a thought toward Ten, just trying to sneak it inside nine, the post. Eight, seven, six, it was for not. Five, four, three, two, one. Second shot of the first half up on the board for ETSU. Outshot by Virginia 5-2, 4-1 in the own goal department. And the Cavaliers also had a plus three advantage on Virginia corners. Cavaliers Virginia no, owning most of the possession time no. in the first half of action. And there were chances to look. And he and his teammates getting ready to go back at it. Told you at the end of the first half, those of you who were with us, for the benefit of those who are just finding us, Mangaroff, Gashi, and... A Nor who came in red hot and is fresh off those ACC Player of the Week honors for Virginia are the other three players who have notched a shot in this contest. And the offensive looks for ETSU have come from Richards to begin things and then Leitner who had the the later of the looks for ETSU, the two shots for the Bucks, But Petruni... With the one save has allowed nothing by and Cole Hunter with four saves in that first 45 minutes of action. The same result for ETSU has allowed nothing by. Okay, Pleased to have you with us on the ACC Network for tonight's coverage of Virginia's opener of a three-match homestand. Cavaliers following this first ever meeting with ETSU out of the Southern Conference will welcome in Louisville in an ACC contest followed by Hofstra. Those scheduled for Friday and then Tuesday to complete the three-match homestand. And then it's a little back and forth for Virginia. Going to be Boston College on the road, Pitt at home, Virginia Tech on the road, and then back home for the combo of the always dangerous high point 
out of conference battle in North Carolina. That's an ACC network showdown at 7 p.m. on the 27th of the month of October. So that's kind of how the schedule begins to shake out for Virginia beyond this. So key non-conference game just to not only return to the win column for one of these teams, but for Virginia, one quick tune-up before they turn their attention to Louisville after things went the 15th-ranked team in the country's way and the Virginia clash with Notre Dame most recently. Five Bucks play all 45 in that first half. And that group, Gunther, Rivent Lowe, Ramos, and of course Cross. And Chiriap all having never left the pitch in game action tonight. Same true for Virginia's Citron, Visa, Aiden O'Connor, anchoring things among that back group. And of course, Gashi, Singer, they all sharing that distinction as well. Even though Virginia used four off the bench, and Islander Uboga, who had the two shots off the bench, O'Corey and Sloan in that first half. The Players off the bench for ETSU that have seen time in this contest. Gunn Leitner, who had the late shot in the first half. Franks. And then the very first to come in. Kovacic. Entered with Bittencourt. Departed after he was a little shaken up on an early collision. So that's how the personnel has been used by these two teams thus far. Visa to take this throw in. Comes right back to Visa. Germany turns and sends this Citron's direction. Of course, one of the Virginia captains. Sharing that honor with Holden Brown. With no Holden Brown tonight. Troni handling things in goal for UVA in that first half. And here's another challenge in the direction of Cole Hunter. Oh, yeah. uh, Hunter, yeah. even with his leaping ability, will not be able to get to this. As is, uh, is the latest of the Virginia shots that will sell high. Kind of dumped out near side by Singer. And speaking of Citron, it is, in fact, the Virginia captain who tried for the goal. Citron a shot now, and Virginia's total to six. Citron, O'Connor, Norris, and Times Miller. We've talked about Singer tonight among that group of defenders Citron, Visa, O'Connor, Singer. Listed as that back line of defense for Virginia. little by to this point. In fact, uh, this is a Virginia team that it's worth revisiting the note about possession and their road trip to Notre Dame it was a team that dominated 58% of possession, created five shots that were on goal and earning six corner opportunities, but 
in the end, seeing the outcome at 3-1. So Virginia is still looking for that breakthrough even as we work a little deeper into the second half of their non-conference tilt with ETSU. Right back to Cameron Carroll into the contest for the Bucks. If you are among those just finding tonight's matchup, the scoring for ETSU on the year coming from the combo of Ramos a couple of goals, McKenna a couple of goals, the Brazilian, the, the native of, of Scotland alongside him, McKenna like his head coach. As we told you about Coach Lilly a little bit earlier, those are the two that you look to for scoring on that ETSU oh, side of things. Here. So there have been four additional goal scorers in Pan Holsters. Goal, Richard's goal. And the combo of Chiriap and Kovacic who both have a goal on the year for ETSU. So that's where the scoring has been provided for a Bucks team that has wins against Georgia Southern, Radford, and Presbyterian on the slate, opposite losses to Kentucky, North Carolina, UNCW, and Asheville with a draw against USC Upstate mixed in between. Add it all up, three, four, and one coming into tonight for ETSU opposite Virginia's four, three, and one record entering play tonight. Just a reset for you, and it is. For the sake of those who are joining us in the second half, the first ever meeting between these two programs, the ETSU Bucks from the eastern portion of the state of Tennessee in the Tri-Cities area. Johnson City and the homestanding Hoos here at Clockner as the SoCon collides with the ACC. More prolific scoring offenses in the Southern Conference held down in Virginia. You know what they've done this year thus far held down. Though here's a chance right at the top of the six, and it seems this has been the familiar refrain throughout the night. Every time Virginia gets close to putting something together. In this case, O'Corey and company thought maybe they had something. Cole Hunter steps out again. And he has timed it beautifully. His decision-making has been effective. And while he does not notch another save here, he does scoop up the ball before oh, he and his teammates are, are in harm's way at the hands of the Virginia attack. stays a level at nothing nothing and here is a header and that is going to go just wide of Batroni who's directing uh, his latest comments in, in the direction of that back line just maybe from a communication standpoint that was about as close as it has been for ETSU. Richards lying on the pitch and watching that one sell wide to the far side as it stays where it's been. Played back into the box. Truni again stepping out. And he'll gather this up. Coastal Carolina transfer as we walked you through in the first half. Had the one game under his belt prior to this with Holden Brown playing in the other seven in goal for Virginia. Truni getting the nod on this night. 
it is so far so good with the one save and nothing allowed to this juncture. Remember, four saves, but the three goals allowed in his previous timeout. So, Petruni, as we told you, was highly decorated in the Sun Belt and for his time in goal for the Chanticleers. Still working on a clean sheet at the moment. Both he and his counterpart, Cole Hunter, keeping that the case over. 10 minutes plus now into the second half. Punched across by Chris McKenna. That was McKenna, the last to, to have a touch on it. This is going to come all the way far side. It's your eye app. Eventually, Van Holzer. But remember, it was McKenna alongside Ramos, the, the big time scoring threat. Now, here's a, a look from out at the top of the box, firing away is Van Holzer. But Petruni looks through all the traffic and waits on it to settle into his grasp. So, uh, glance at something. 58th minute that is not to be on a fourth ETSU shot. One thing you notice happening here in the earlier stages of this second half, ETSU closing up the gap, at least in the shots department. As a few more looks have been afforded the Bucks, at least to this point in the second 45. all the talk about the way ETSU could score and the numbers that had placed them near the top of their own league in that category. It's been this work for ETSU that has been just as impressive. There's a header to clear. Oh, Virginia. They have limited the passing lanes for Virginia and played a physical brand of soccer on this night that has served the Johnson City crew well and it looks like for the first time, our referee is going to come over and hand out a card. So a yellow assist, Gashi of Virginia. And here's what for as he tried the tackle. Line siding. The ETSU buck, and as a result, a yellow card. First yellow on, obviously, Gashi. We had right out of the gate. TM, I'm talking minute number two. But, uh, yellow card. Since that time, though, combined 13 fouls have been whistled between these two teams. Nothing of great consequence until this caution that is given Gashi. And boy, look at the physical nature of things right at the substitution area. Standing by and waiting to participate. Axel Bowden found himself in harm's way for ETSU. On an overcast night where rain has been a factor, you see the field chopped up a bit. These two remain scoreless. Should mention an official word now coming so that we can pass it along. Triap also receiving substitutions. A yellow card on the ETSU side of things. So. A couple of players, one on the side card. In the second half. There comes the Noor. 
number 16, Daniel Mankarov. Out onto the pitch for Virginia. David O'Corey. And number eight, Brendan Lamb coming in for number two. Cavaliers leading score. Alvin Gashi. And a player that has been as uh, hot as anyone. Not only on the Virginia roster, but around the ACC. Scored a trio of times in two games. So 1-1 one, one draw on the road at JMU. And, of course, the 3-1 victory over NC State. That he sparked and was the catalyst for back on the 16th that the night that coach George Gelnovach picked up his 100th ACC win all time difficult to put in perspective in mere words the impact he has had on this program as well as on this sport Key, key contributors. Both in his teaching ability and he orchestrates this group. Here's a cross, a little header, perhaps there at the top of the six. And then Virginia going to fire away from the top of the 18, right there at the box. And bodies are in the way. It'll rattle around and pinball out of there again. And though the Cavaliers put a threat together, it was not to be. Take a look at this. Visa will the cross. Oh, Nothing man. on the header. Though a carom's off for a shot at distance. Which again is right off that back grouping for ETSU. Off the foot of Parker Sloan. Seven shots for Virginia. Now a plus three advantage in that category. Yet it remains scoreless. He talked to Coach Gelnovach. And that milestone, that 100th ACC victory. Just the second coach to achieve that and the first to do it those of you who follow the league and follow the sport closely would know at a single school stone was hit in 2022 wake and pit both the stops needed to get the job done ahead of coach gelnovach's earning of that same honor of course his fingerprints on just about everything having happened here This program certainly in recent memory. You think about oh, his couple appearances, most recently in 2019. But to get to the century mark in ACC victories, a noteworthy moment for the gentleman at the helm of this Virginia program. free kick. Looked like it was going to be taken by someone else only to see Cole Hunter wave that off as he comes up to handle that responsibility for ETSU. Mentioned the, the Bucks under David Lilly. One end of the coaching career to the other, right? When you look at these two. This is a team that has responded to, to Coach Lilly's challenge. We've talked about his time as an assistant, how welcome it was, his return to ETSU after such a strong playing career and then coaching career as the head man at Milligan before coming back. This is a team that's 2-0-1 oh, when they're being asked to bounce back after a loss, in this case home losses, as they experienced in, in the most recent outing against UNC Asheville. So, a 
uh, one of the great signs of coaching and, and adjustments. How will a team react? How will a team respond when things have not gone their way in, in recent moments? And this is a team that has responded to his challenge as well. And the Lily era so far in his tenure, they have been able to right the ship, these Bucks, each time they've experienced such a, either a setback or a draw. his direction of the home variety. So, that team on the road to Virginia tonight and so far playing even with the Cavaliers. Who's want to change that right now? That toward the middle. It is headed down and it is going to be Lenore who will gut his trademark backflip after scoring Virginia's first goal of the night. Lenore stays hot as in the 16th minute. He will finally put Virginia on the board. Eight shots for UVA. Well, time and again, I say finally because time and again it looked as if the Cavaliers were going to get something by Cole Hunter. And here in the end, it is who else but Adore to get the job done. And look at this, created by Megrov as he provides the cross. And Adore from inside the six with plenty to celebrate for Virginia. It is 1-0 on Anor's fifth goal of the season. For Mangaroff, it is a second assist on the year alongside a, a single goal that Mangaroff has scored for Virginia. So he adds to his point total also. But the leading scorer for the Cavaliers, for the first to score on this night and give the Hoos an advantage of 1-0 over ETSU. Well, you think about, uh, it took a little while for Anor to, to heat up. He had five goals in three preseason contests, but had just three shots in, in regular season action through the first handful of games. Really came to life within the last week or so. Now having notched the, the fifth goal for Virginia in this match, or his fifth on the year, I should say, coming in this match, which makes it one nothing Cavaliers. So scoring threat. as advertised on this night. As ETSU will now have just under 23 minutes to attempt to equalize with Virginia seeing the eighth shot become the one to pay dividends. Eight shots, five of them on goal and after four saves from Cole Hunter Cavaliers work one by him. Mangaroff just laying that into the perfect location for Anur to provide the header into the back of the net. for more, but that's turned aside, although the Cavaliers is time for another Cavalier corner kick for Terrapin. Get back. Make something happen. So for a doors goal, Virginia trying to use what is the latest to Cavaliers corners. Five of them to this juncture. That's played long to Citron, who chases it toward the far side flag. Well, the, the term used in describing a nor by the Virginia coaching staff, special. Kind of coming from 
Mount Verde Academy. Many outstanding athletes they provide. Went out in January, made the connection right away. Had to fly out and, and see him a couple of times, did the Virginia staff, because he had already used up his five official visits. So it was a virtual tour before he came on board in Charlottesville, and his impact has been anything but virtual for UVA. It uh, has been something to see what he has done in the flesh across the last couple of weeks for the Cavaliers. And the other thing they talk so much about with Anor, an old-school approach. To not only his playing style, but also to his career, as evidenced by the fact that he did go ahead and commit to UVA without you know, this being one of the places where he had made those early visits. And has scored Virginia's long goal. Stephen Lenore in the 66th minute. UVA the lead. Here's ETSU's first real chance to counter. Panholzer battling to try to secure possession. It is not to be, and that is punched forward in the direction of the door. Eventually retrieved by ETSU. Bucks looking for something right at the top of the box, but this will trickle off and into Virginia's grass. Play long. Anor gathers it up just ahead of the touchline over there. The Virginia fans uh, had to be thinking that some degree across the first week or so of the regular season. Where, where was the, the prolific scoring that they saw from Anor in the three preseason contests in which he scored the five goals? Well, guess what? It may have taken a little while for him to match that total in the regular campaign, but as of tonight, having scored his fifth, and though he may have waded into the regular season just a little bit, has lived up to the billing in recent days. O'Connor sees it rattle off of his left foot. And here's an effort from the top of the box, but much like was the case for Virginia before the Cavaliers finally broke through, ETSU finding nothing but opposing bodies there to turn aside, and he lanes toward the goal. It'll be Virginia's Jack Singer going to have it, as you see, Henrik Gunther. Backing up following that brief push for ETSU. ETSU tonight has made a push from time to time, really testing Petruni, who has a couple of saves on five ETSU shots. Still 17 minutes with which to work for the Bucks. Of course, you know by now. Overtime in the NCAA ranks anymore. No extra time in college soccer anyway. So what happens across the final? 16 and change remaining in this one. Will be the outcome of whether Virginia makes the lead sticker. ETSU finds a way to equalize. You know, Coach Gelnovac talking about that. Said he was somewhat skeptical 
going into last year. But after going through it, ended up liking the fact that things are being settled in, in one way or the other in regulation, at least settled to an outcome, whether it be a draw or a one-loss scenario. ACC. Of course, uh, having the, the review piece of it as well, so much to, to navigate and the growing technology and the changing landscape of the rules package. One of the recent changes and one of the things that the coaching staffs, players alike, have become or are becoming accustomed to. Right out for Jack Singer. Comes all the way over and before Citron gets a hold of it. Briefly was at the feet of Brendan Lamb. 15 minutes or so under his belt tonight among those off the bench for UVA. Lamb Islander. Bogu, who had the two shots in the first half for Virginia. Okori and Sloan. The five for UVA that have experienced uh, time on the pitch tonight off the bench in addition to the starters. Jason Gunto. Throw this in for ETSU. He, along with Bowden, Kovacic, Leitner, Norden, and Franks among those the six that have been in the contest off the bench for ETSU. Ultimately, back to Joey Batruni. <laughs> Mentioned what was upcoming for Virginia. Bucks, of course, not far from a return to Southern Conference play in their own right. Second against ACC opponents this year, having played the North Carolina Tar Heels and falling in that contest earlier on the year. Back to action at Summers Taylor Stadium with Wofford and then UNCG, one of the great powers in that league in the Southern Conference, on the 30th and then October 6th, respectively, Saturday and then next Friday. South Conference play continues for ETSU and before play continues here. A moment needed. From the training staff to come out as play stops with 12.51 to go. There is Cole Hunter, four saves tonight. We told you about his great work and it took Virginia a while to get one by him in the end. It was a nor in the 66th minute with the only thing that has eluded the ETSU keeper tonight. You'll see Mangroff steady things and create as he crosses it into the box. And right in the heart of the six, a downward header that started the backflip for Anor on his fifth goal of the season. Which has placed Virginia out front 1-0. Entering for ETSU, 
Number 22, Simone Fredberg. Meeting up with the Cavaliers for Chris McKinnon. ACC play and hoping that trend continues with Entering the Cavaliers, number 21, Cardinal coming in. Norris, coming in for number 10, Axel Allen. As the next conference opponent for UVA. Still waiting to put things back in action. As Nico Cross will do so. Under 13 to play, that goal we just gave you an additional look at. All the scoring tonight, despite a combined 13 shots between these two teams. Eight of those belonging to UVA. Eight for charm. And nothing since for Virginia. Norris in for Hollander, the latest group of substitutions. As well as Clevberg, who entered for McKenna on the ETSU side of things. All that coming right at the 77th minute getting underway. Just as it looked like there may be something for Bettencourt there. It ends up being possession, Virginia. First ever meeting between the Hoos and the Bucks. And trending UVA here at Clockner, where the Cavaliers have been so good over the years. Talked about the conference schedule coming up. Virginia off to a 1 2 and 0 oh start in conference action and trying to improve tonight to 4-1-1 one, and one, out of league play. And here's an oar looking to perhaps double his pleasure tonight but it is turned aside before he can think about any further scoring on the ETSU goal. An oar, by the way, that the goal oh, is a couple of shots in and Bogu, the two with multiple shots in tonight's contest for Virginia. The only player with more than a single shot for ETSU is Richards. As you keep track of where the opportunities have been provided. Speaking of opportunities, here's one. Megraw plays that quick down to Visa. And you know the result here. As things will come to a halt at 10.16 to go. night for J.C. Griggs, our referee, Kapler, Andrew Chitalumo, the ARs in this one, Mangroff lost that up to the top of the box with a bit on it, but up being ETSU's played long staying onside is Lucas Norton and in the end he'll reset it as it goes all the way back to the ETSU side of the field here's Clev Burt Simon Clev Burt near side Shariap had it for an instant comes back to him and now here's Axel Bowden Bowden, a little bend on that in the direction of the top of the six. And how about this collision as Cole Hunter comes way out of goal and not yet popping back up is a door. And the yellow card is out. Yellow card is issued. And it will be. Hand it out. Take another look at this. As Cole Hunter, a long way from home, busy tonight, four saves. But 
collides, and it was a catch your breath moment for who's faithful here at Clockner. As they watch the gentleman responsible for the majority of the offensive lane take his time coming to his feet, but he looks no worse for the wear now. Card earned, and after the foul, here's Virginia. Back and forth between Citron and Lamb. And now here's Aiden O'Connor. Citron Just played that back to Visa. It's now O'Connor on ball again. He'll play this long and right at the edge of the box. All the way across. Visa or Mangrove? Mangrove. Anor won't be able to get to it as the two who connected on the lone Virginia goal tried to come together once more, this time to no avail. The precious moments working their way off the game clock is now down to eight in change with which to work for ETSU. Number 11, Axel Bodian. And number 30, Chris McKenna coming in. Bucks. Once more looking for fresh legs as they turn to Jack Perry, who just came on. Gone back to Clev Berg. It's an ETSU team. Came in and top tier of its league, the Southern Conference. Shots and shots on goal. Couple of players with a pair of goals on the year that were highlighted at the start, Ramos and McKenna. And now in need of one just shy of seven minutes to play. To avoid a second consecutive setback, this one at the hands of Virginia after the 2-0 loss to UNC Asheville at home back on the 19th. Wow, East Tennessee State. Sebastian Ravenlo getting together with Pila. Now traffic being directed a little bit by Brendan Land. Here's the captain. Citron plays that forward, and here is Visa. Out of a way across and beyond the goal line sense of urgency on display from Cole Hunter. His time is ticking on his team down 1-0. Long goal Hunter. for Virginia if you're just finding us from Anor on the assist of Mangrove. His second assist of the year and the fifth goal of the season for Anor as he just keeps on clicking from an attacking standpoint for UVA. of course for those of you just becoming acquainted with the program and his impact upon it the true freshman the true first year scoring threat for Virginia who has really emerged across the last couple of weeks to be everything it appeared he was going to be during the friendlies. And speaking of Anor, here he is on cue. 
you just love the energy with which he plays. It's so fun to watch as he's in the midst of everything for Virginia. And here it comes to him, able to stay on side. He'll fire away, and that is going to be well high, so he will not secure the brace here. Still, though, responsible for Virginia's long goal tonight. Here's a look at Taylor to him. And just how high that sailed off the foot of Anor. On what was his third shot of the night. Under four minutes to play. Two teams scoreless in this their first ever meeting after the first 45 and scoreless all the way into the 66th minute before Anora found that success how about a potential clean sheet on the horizon in a Virginia uniform For the keeper, Joey Petroni. Coastal Carolina transfer. Told you of such success he had during his time with the Chanticleers in the Sun Belt. A hand raised from Petroni. As Virginia tries to salt away. A return to the win column if they can hang on for just under three more minutes. Cavaliers looking to open the homestand in impressive fashion, and that found the foot of Panholzer, but it also found the body of a couple of those Virginia defenders. And now here was an oar looking for the icing on the cake, but this will roll harmlessly to Hunter. Hunter quickly gets it out to his back line. CTSU has to have something and have it now. Well, as we close in on the final two minutes, the numbers solidly Virginia's tonight. Plus three shots advantage at 9-6, plus three in the on-goal department at 5-2, and plus four on corners at 5-1 for UVA, where it matters most. Up 1-0 on the strength of the mangrove assist of the Anora goal. And stepping in on this pass is Norris plus minutes under his belt tonight as he will go to work. Connects with the far side post and sees it care of all. Boy, almost a second Virginia goal as Norris had his first shot of the night and put Virginia in double digits in shots with the Cavaliers 10th. And that did not miss sneaking inside the post furthest away from him by much. Seventy seconds remaining. There is one more one look. Minute. One minute to play in the half. Shot from Norris. As it found the post on that ETSU goal. Inside a minute. Cavaliers already 1-0 victories over Iona. And George Mason on the year. Looking for the third win of that variety and the clean sheet for Joey Batruni. of urgency for ETSU and a half minute with which to work. Equalizer still there for the taking. Give and go. Chase to the far side by Ramos, the leading scorer for ETSU. Going to send this in from the corner quickly. Last gasp for the Bucks. Three, and a header two, clears it one. from who else but Anor as he's the goal scorer and ultimately the defensive player for Virginia that turns aside the last effort from ETSU in this contest and the first ever meeting between the ETSU.